Hi, I'm Alex Raymond. Today I'll be talking to you about my latest paper, Culture-Based Explainable Human Agent Deconfliction. This paper was written by myself, Hatice Gunesh and Amanda Prorock, and all three of us are associates with the University of Cambridge. I would also like to thank my sponsors at the Royal Commission for the Exhibition of 1851 and my industrial sponsor, L3 Harris. So without further ado, let's crack on. So this picture on your left shows the oldest known written law code. It was inscribed around 4,000 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia. It contains a set of rules that are carved into a stone tablet to help humans solve conflicts and crimes working as a civil and penal code of their society. Citizens and authorities would consult this table and make decisions regarding resolution mechanisms, be it settlements or punishments. This shows that we have been rule aware in terms of conflict resolution for a long time. To this day, societies are established with laws, constitutions, sports rules, traffic codes, and we are bound to abide by them. But what happens when human robot or human agent societies become a reality? The first question we pose is then, can we establish an architecture to enable humans and agents to justify their actions based on the rules in order to provide accountability? So this links us directly to the problem of explainability. According to Cranefield, Accountability is an explainability problem in the sense that accountable agents must answer queries, explain their intent, and adjust their behavior as a result of dialogues. Due to the fact that we are dealing with human agent and multi-agent societies, we need to th adopt a reasoning model that works well for both humans and machines. Humans think in a non-monotonic way. This means that the inclusion of more facts does not necessarily increase and can in fact decrease the size of the set of conclusions. We need a reasoning model that respects the non-monotonicity, but also allows for dialogues and the generation of explanations. We chose argumentation frameworks as the mechanism since it satisfies Cranefield's requirements for accountability and respects the non-monotonicity required in human argumentation. But when do we really benefit from making use of explainable features? Rosenfeld and Richardson propose a taxonomy of three levels, where the need for explanations can range from critical, to beneficial and not helpful. They argue that the need for explanations increases when humans require justification to accept results or to develop trust in the system. Therefore, can we say something about the complexity of a system? Would you need more explanations to understand the rules of checkers or the rules of commercial air traffic? These are the questions we are interested in and we will address them as well in this work. The contributions we bring here relate to the question, can we find an equivalence between rule sets from human environments and agent policies in multi-agent or hybrid human agent systems? With this work, we present two contributions. The first one is an argumentation-based architecture for explainable human agent systems with disputed resources. We also present a user study to investigate how explanations affect human performance in systems with simple and systems with complex rule sets. We're going to start looking into this argumentation-based architecture first. And that's called X-Core. The X-Core architecture stands for Explainable Conflict Resolution. X-Core is an architecture for decentralized human agent resource contention systems, and it consists of four parts, cultures, propositional dialogues, argument verification, and explanation generation. Let's look at cultures and propositional dialogues. We say a culture C, is composed by a set of arguments A, the set of attack relationships R, and we're adding a new set to these argumentation frameworks called propositions, or K. K is a subset of the set of arguments A. These are actions that should be taken to resolve a contingent resource. If an agent says, you should give this item to me, or you should let me pass, these are propositions. A dialogue is going to happen afterwards with arguments that support or challenge this proposition coming from both players in the dialogue game. It's important to mention that this culture is shared by all the agents. In X-Core, each argument represents a rule in this human rule set and vice versa. Those propositional dialogues are exchanges about these propositions. But we, we need to check if the facts that are being uttered make sense in a specific context. We present the notion of argument verification as a way to demonstrate the evidence for a certain claim. An agent player C 
should only be able to choose an argument that says I am heavier than everyone else if its verifier function returns true after comparing the weight of player C against all other known agents in context Z. In that case, we say the argument is demonstrably true. Let's look at the diagram demonstrating the overall process of XCore. Here we have stage one, and this represents the human rule set. This example with four rules. In the XCore process, we're going to separate these rules into arguments in a culture. For every argument A, B, C, D, that stems from the human rule set, we're going to have a separate verifier function and the implementation of this function consists in showing whether A is true or not with the evidence given by C and Z. After implementing all these functions separately, we can then map the attack relationship that these arguments have between themselves, determining which argument defeats which. This is based on Dung's seminal abstract argumentation framework paper. We recommend checking out this work in case you want to learn more about it. We then arrive at those three steps in XCore. Starting with the rule set, we transform each rule in an argument with an associated verifier function, and lastly, we create the links or the attack relationships between these arguments. The last step is to generate explanations. We start by looking at the history of a particular dialogue and extract explanations by selecting a subset of the history that contains a winning move, that is, the argument that could not be defeated. We can generate explanations with any length by sampling the dialogue history. And this completes our X-Core architecture. Now, let's look at our proof of concept study. We developed a computer game called Busy Barracks. This game allowed us to concretely instantiate rule sets in the form of cultures and evaluate hypotheses. In this game, the human player controls a military officer represented by the red circle. This officer had to navigate the map towards the destination, highlighted as a red cell. The map is also populated by other computer agents who are also trying to reach their destinations and might get in the way. All agents move in lockstep, so as soon as a human agent moves, all agents change position at the same time. At the start of each round, the human is encouraged to reach the destination as quickly as possible. However, when agents are blocking each other's way, they need to refer to the deconfliction rules. The human receives a paper document with the rules and must compare certain properties on the right-hand side, such as military rank and task importance, to determine whether they should give way or if they should move ahead. The computer agents always play optimally, so if the human decides to move forward when they shouldn't, they will crash and lose points. If they give way unnecessarily, they'll take longer and also lose points. The only way to maximize your score is by getting the rules right and not making any mistakes. The study was performed on a group of 35 players who each play the game twice, one with explanations in the form of hints and another one without any explanations. The ordering was alternated. The participants were divided into three groups. Each group played one of three types of cultures. The easy one with two properties and two rules, the medium with four properties and four rules, and the hard one with six properties and nine rules. If a player was allocated to the medium group, for example, they would play one explainable and one non-explainable round, both in medium difficulty. We are interested in observing the benefit the explainable round brings compared to the non-explainable one, but across different difficulty levels. So, do explanations bring a larger benefit in harder levels than in easier levels? We hypothesize that yes, and we measure those hypotheses for human performance, time spent in task, and human perception. We also perform a subjective experience questionnaire at the end of the experiment. This is what players can see on the right-hand side in the non-explainable versus the explainable round in medium difficulty. You can see four properties, special ops, task status, military rank, and task importance. These are color-coded to facilitate user comprehension. In the non-explainable round, they have to compare values and refer to the paper rule set to figure out whether they have priority or if they must give way. In the explainable case, a hint illustrates a potentially winning argument. Across difficulties, the number of properties to be compared would also change. And that's the only difference between the rounds. In order to measure human performance, we observe the normalized difference in score, represented by the letter S. Underneath it, we also measure the normalized difference in the number of collisions and time elapsed. 
We perform a Kruskal Wallace age test to compare the populations, and we can find strongly significant distinctions between easy and hard for all measurements. This means that in more complex environments, explanations provide a much greater improvement than in simpler, simpler environments. In fact, observing the data for the easy rounds, we can see that the mean and median improvement is negative on the explainable rounds. We can also see this effect on an increase in collisions and time lapse in easy rounds. This interesting observation tells us that if the system is sufficiently simple, adding explanations will in fact affect human performance negatively. In user perception metrics, we measure the perception of challenge, competence, effect-related questions such as frustration and irritation, and game-specific questions in order to measure understanding. We managed to distinguish populations between easy and hard for all measurements, and results were particularly stronger in challenge, where medium and hard also presented significant differences. We have then that all our hypotheses are supported by the results. Additionally, our post-experiment interviews collected spontaneous comments about the utility of explanations. Most participants in the easy level said that explanations were not helpful or were distracting. Players at the medium level reported using the explanations to confirm their thought process, while players on hard said the explanations were crucial to help them finish the game. These findings map well to the taxonomy provided by Rosenfeld and Richardson, and suggest that this taxonomy of the need of explanations can be considered not only by trust and acceptability, but under the dimension of system complexity as well. Therefore, today we have successfully demonstrated how you can use XCore to build explainable, rule-aware human agent systems. And we also illustrated the need for explanations also relate to the complexity of the underlying system. I hope you enjoyed the talk and thank you very much.